Okay guys, this is day five after my reconstructive ACL surgery and also a shaving of my medial meniscus. And I just wanted to share with kind of where I'm at because when I was about to get the surgery, I was looking on YouTube trying to get an idea of what the recovery was gonna be like, how bad the surgery is and also how long it takes to recover. And I just wanna show you guys after five days, right? This is the fifth day. I can walk perfectly fine. I'll even show you guys and demonstrate for you. So this is no crutches at all. I don't even think it's that noticeable. I think that I'm walking pretty normal. So uh, how did I do it? You know, for one, I had tons of prayers. And for two, you guys, you have to do the physical therapy. You have to ice it, you have to be disciplined, and you have to rest it as much as you can, especially in the first few days or first week where you have swelling. Okay, take care. Yes. Your is actually tore from here going here. So what happened, you can see there's a flap, it actually went like that. So yeah. It's somehow like a bucket from the... Okay. You can actually search it on the internet. I, I know what it is. Yeah. Okay. It's actually the worst. Yeah. <laughs> this is your ACL. The ACL is supposed to be like this. Okay. But it's like there's nothing left here. And your remnants, the one here, actually incorporated with the PCL, which is actually here. So it went like that. Okay, should be there connected in the wall. So that's a new ACL now. Okay. okay. There you go. Then once you put it inside, it's there. This one won't stick. And it's not connected in the wall. Definitely not. I could not walk right now. Thank you, bro, for coming. Of Where are we going? Let's go. Let's go. Okay, you guys, so I finished the surgery today. It wasn't too bad. Like, once I, when I went into like, the clinic, they were playing like upbeat music, like workout music, which kind of got me pumped to get it over with. Um, but they, they did a really great job. I had an anesthesiologist that um, they'll inject you with something and you'll start feeling better. And then eventually you'll just kind of pass out. Unfortunately, I woke up like a few times during the procedure and I was freaking out because they were basically using like these torture looking devices on my knee. But uh, ultimately I was okay. And after the procedure, you, you have like a spinal tap, you can't feel anything from the waist down. And so when you wake up from the procedure, it's really not that painful. But when, when it wears off, it's extremely painful on the first day. So what I figured out was you do not want to move around. Of course, you have to move around just to get out of the place and into your home. But once you get home, stay put. Like just put up two pillows, put your foot up, and just accept that that is your life. So, here's what it looks like. This is basically my life for the next month or so. I don't even know. How's it going you guys? Back in the house in Alabang with my family taking care of me. This is day three. I had my first physical therapy today, which actually went quite well. They basically just cleaned my wounds and 
did like a cold compress and like this laser thing that like was really hot. Anyway, it reduced the swelling and that's the most important part of the first week is to reduce the swelling. And after kind of bending it and flexing it and doing the different exercises that I'll show you guys later, check this out. Three days after surgery and I can already stand and I can actually kind of walk around already. So for those of you who are thinking about getting the surgery and being worried about being completely immobilized, you won't be. You just have to stick to the regimen. This first week is so important that you guys follow the directions of your physical therapist and you push through the pain and you ice it and you reduce the swelling. This is my fifth day off of the surgery and I feel great and I can walk and um, I'm off of the crutches and I'm telling you anyone who has the surgery the more physical therapy you do, the sooner you're going to recover. And in fact, really, the surgery is only half of the battle. The other half is actually doing uh, physical therapy. So I've been doing the exercises, the, the leg pumps, and now I'm not, no longer going to neglect my upper body. So I'm going to um, do some work up the upper body, then finish out with some um, physical therapy exercises that they taught me. So here we go. Let's go. It's amazing to me is how it only takes like one week of no activity to fall completely out of shape. Anyway, um, we're gonna keep it, keep it going. Keep the workouts going. Okay, this next one is arguably the most important exercise. So for me, I injured my left leg. Um, this is just like your standard heel pumps, they call it. And all you're really doing is just moving your heel, your left heel, up like this. And you want to do this a lot. Like, in fact, if you can do do a hundred an hour, it'd be good for you. If you can get in over a thousand of these per day, it's gonna help you a lot. And the reason why it helps is not only does it strengthen your calf muscle as well as your hamstring, but it also promotes circulation in your knee, which helps you heal faster. So, a lot of the people that heal really fast will be doing this anytime they have during the day. This next one's really simple. Your injured knee. You just lift up and you should probably try to do about 20 of these per set and at least three reps. Okay, so this next exercise is the most boring one. It's better with a medicine ball, but all I could find was this guy. And you hold it together with your toes kind of like this and you push your toes up. I'm not sure if you can see that. And you take your injured knee, and you just flex your quads, trying to get your hamstring to touch the ground. And you hold it for 10 seconds. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and relax. 